Hi guys, James Orr, founder of Decisive Trading. Today I want to take a look at the trading plan, which really is one of the cornerstones of becoming a successful trader. What I want to do is first of all look at the importance of having a trading plan. Then secondly, I want to look at one of the most common mistakes I see people make with the trading plan. And then thirdly, I want to look at how to expand that trading plan. So basically how to take care of the most common mistake that I see people make that we're going to go over in section two. Okay, so when you first come to trading, it's this very exciting thing that you've just discovered. You want to learn as much as possible about it as you can. And what tends to happen is you spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos. Maybe you buy lots of trading books, you read through them all, you make notes in them all. You find lots of trading forums, lots of trading articles on things like Investopedia, lots of trading blogs, and you just gather as much information as you possibly can. And then when it comes time to sit down at the charts, you've got all of this information rattling around in your head and you start to see things everywhere. So let's say you sit down at the chart. In the morning, you see a head and shoulders pattern. You take the trade. Later on in the day, you see a potential sloping support and resistance line. You take the trade. Later on, you see what looks like a Fibonacci pullback. And you've read a lot about Fibonacci and these are very high probability trades. So you take the trade. After that, you see an ascending triangle. Maybe you see a price squeeze. Maybe you see a double top at support and resistance. All of these different things. And what is actually happening is you are, well, first of all, you're over trading. You are looking for setups in the market. You're trying to make everything you learn fit into what you're seeing in front of you. And you're over trading and more often than not, you're losing lots of trades. And the best way to describe this actually is if you've heard the saying, Jack of all trades, master of none. That's basically what you're doing when you're trying to use everything you know about trading um, and implement it onto the charts. You are spreading yourself too thin. What you really want to do as a trader is focus on one or two things. You want to become a master in those areas rather than the jack of all trades. And what the trading plan lets you do is it allows you to build on whatever area is you choose. So let's say you choose head and shoulders. The trading plan gets built as you start to study and learn as much as possible as you can about the head and shoulders pattern. So through things like backtesting, demo trading, paper trading, and live trading, you are going to learn more and more about this head and shoulders pattern. And what you're gonna be able to do is build a way for you to have an edge in the market. So perhaps through all this back testing, all this testing, you find that if you focus on the head and shoulders pattern, you can have a 60 or 70% strike rate um, when trading. With your money management, with your risk reward, that allows you to be profitable overall. Now by focusing just on that, you can then build your skill set, build your discipline, and learn to implement that trade plan successfully. By trading everything at once, by just trying to use all this information that you have found, what you are doing is you're putting yourself at a big disadvantage. Um, one of the ways I can describe it is I suppose what you're doing is you're taking away the probabilities of trading because if you test the head and shoulders pattern and you see that you're going to get that 60 to 70% strike rate, to achieve that, you need to trade, you need to actively trade that head and shoulders pattern in whatever way you've tested. So if you've tested it on one market, you need to focus on that market and you need to trade it full time. However, if you've got lots of different things you're looking for, to make the probabilities work for all of them, you would need to trade all of them every time the pattern appeared. And well, the first thing is, it's very, very unlikely you're gonna have a trading account big enough to trade all of these different things at once. And what actually starts to happen is, you'll say take the head and shoulders pattern on the Monday, it'll happen to be one of the losing trades. On the Tuesday, Tuesday morning, you really wanna make that money back. And it's, this is potentially one of those Fibonacci pullbacks you're seeing, so you take that trade. And that just happens to be one of the Fibonacci losers. On the Wednesday, you take that ascending triangle, and you know, this one has to work surely, but what happens is that's just one of the losing trades for the ascending triangle, and that one loses. You would need to trade all of these patterns 
all of the time for the probabilities to start working in your favor. So it makes much more sense to build that trading plan, first of all, um, because it's going to help you develop the knowledge um, and the understanding of what it is you're looking for and what it is you're focusing on because it's identifying the edge in the market and how to exploit that edge. Now, the second point is, following on from that, the most common mistake I see people make with the trading plan. Um, I see it all the time and basically what it is is that the trading plan ends the second someone gets into a trade. So the trading plan focuses so much on the technical reading of the market, of identifying these trades. You know, it has to look like this, it has to set up right here, I have to see the signal candle, the market then needs to do this after the signal candle, perhaps it needs to be a certain side of the moving average, all of these things together, that's what you need to get into the trade. And then you click to enter the trade, and there's nothing else. Big, big problem as a trader because what it is doing is it is opening you up to the human element of trading, so the psychology of trading. And what happens is you get into that trade um, and a scenario of something like this will play out. You get into the trade, what invariably happens is the trade moves against you a little bit, maybe one point, two points, and you're like, Oh my God, oh my God, what have I done? Why have I entered this trade? Look at the setup, it's not a perfect setup. I knew I shouldn't have taken this trade. I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid. If the market just goes back to break even, I'll exit this trade at break even, and I promise, I promise, I'll never take it again. The market comes down a little bit, gets back to your break even, and you breathe this sigh of relief. You're like, Phew. okay, okay, this is fine, this is fine. I knew this was the right trade. I knew this setup was good. It moves down a couple of points into profit. And you're like, trading, why does everyone complain about trading? This is so easy. All I had to do was find this pattern, get into the trade. I knew this was gonna win. This is gonna be so easy, I'm gonna be rich. The market then moves up to break even. Again, you start to panic again, and it moves up and stops you out. And you know, you wanna slam your laptop closed. You wanna storm out of the room. And one of the main issues with that is your trading plan doesn't allow you to remove those emotions. It doesn't allow you to push the emotions to the back of your head and just almost run an automated trading plan. So let me give you a couple of examples. For me, my trading plan, once I get into a trade, um, I, well, first of all, before I even get into the trade, with Pro Real Time, there is a function where you have a ruler, so you can measure on the charts. I'm not sure if MT4 has one, but it probably has something similar. Before I get into that trade, what I'm looking for is a nearby area where that trade is potentially going to see resistance, so potentially where the trade may move to and then start to reverse against me. What I wanna do is when the candle is setting up, I'm measuring, and I'm saying, okay, um, is this gonna be at around about one to one risk to reward by the time it gets there? If it's not, then I just want to skip the trade. So for me, for my trading plan, it doesn't make sense for me to get into a trade um, that is not going to reach you know, near to one to one risk to reward by the time it reaches that area. Now, there's also another part of the trading plan which takes into account my overall analysis. So we have the first section there where I'm looking for that one-to-one -one risk to reward. The second part of the trading plan says, unless your overall analysis of the market is lining up with the trade. So let's say I come to the charts in the morning, I'm reading the charts, I'm saying, okay, this looks really bearish. I'm expecting a bearish move today. Um, and this level right here is the main resistance area where, where I would expect the bears to step in. Now, if I get a setup at that area for a sell position, but the management point is a little bit too close, let's say 0 0.5 to one risk to reward, I will still enter that trade. I know that I'm going to enter that trade because it's, it's lining up with my overall analysis and I know through experience, through testing, through trading live that more often than not, those trades are also going to be winners. But it's part of the trading plan. And then what happens once I get into the trade is I know that until the market reaches those areas of the management point, I'm not doing anything. I'm not making any decisions. So what does that do? Well, first of all, it allows me, if I want to, to get away from the computer. I can just set the alarm at those management areas and walk away. And that's good because, you know, if you're sitting watching the screen, 
you do start to, you know, get frustrated, you start to tap your hand, you start to worry, maybe you're like sitting with your, your head in your hands, you're like, oh, come on, Trey, just work out, just work out. That's the human element. You're trying to remove that as much as possible. So I can walk away from the screen, even if I don't walk away from the screen, and I have all these emotions running around my head. You know, as you become more and more disciplined as a trader, it becomes a little bit easier to ignore them, but they're still there. What my trading plan does is it allows me to push them to the back of my head because I know exactly what I'm doing. Now, if I didn't know what I was doing and I was in this trade and it reached, you know, went down three, four points and started to move against me, of course I'd start to panic. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be thinking, is this trade still valid? Is it not valid? What am I supposed to be doing here? The decisions need to be done before you get into the trade. And then when the market reaches that management point, I know, okay, if the trade is at one to one, I am potentially looking to take profit. What I want to see is, let's say it's a sell position. Um, my analysis is done before I get in. If it reaches this one to one point, the market comes down and then I see a long rejection tail on the five minute candle. What I want to do is either bring my stop down to just above that five minute candle, or I want to consider taking full profits or partial profits. Those are all elements of the trading plan. Before I get into the trade, I make the decision. Okay, I'm going to do this and this because this one's lining up with my overall analysis. And for me, it's likely to make a stronger move than this one-to-one. -one. Um, and it's just automatic. You know, I don't, have to, I don't have to fight through the emotions. One of the best ways I can describe this actually is what we're basically doing when you're trading is you're working under pressure. Now, think about any other industry where they're working under pressure. It can, you know, it can be anything you want at all. Um, what can we use it as an example? So we can use, um, let's say something like a surgeon or someone in the army. Now, when these people are training, they are studying over and over and over again, learning all of the steps that they need to take in any situation so that they know exactly what to do. And the reason for that is because when they are doing it live, they're going to be under pressure. The emotions are going to be in their head. You know, things are going to be screaming at them in their head, telling them, you know, panicking, getting frightened, and basically wanting to get away. Your fight or flight um, reaction kicking in. But what they can do is they can ignore the emotions and just almost go into that automatic. The automatic response is, okay, I know I'm supposed to do this next. Then I'm supposed to do this. Then I'm supposed to do this. It's no different to trading. You need to learn what it is you're going to do when you are under pressure. Now, for me, that involves the management of the trade. For you, what, in fact, one of the most common things I see, and it drives me crazy, is that people have this trading plan. They spend so much time on the trading plan, how to get into the trade. And then when they're in the trade, um, I ask them, okay, what are you gonna do now? And they say, I don't know, one to three risk to reward. And I say, why one to three risk to reward? And it's always, it's always these bloody trading forums and things like this. People post in these trading forums, professional traders, um, they have to have one to three risk to reward. If you're not looking for one to three risk to reward or one to two risk to reward every trade, if you're not getting that every trade, um, you're never going to be a successful trader. Uh, it drives me crazy. I do not know who these people are who post these things in the forums, but you know, they're, they're, projecting professionalism, but I, I can assure you that is not the case. Now, when I first come to, came to trading, I believed that crap also. And I used to get into trades and just sit and think, okay, I need one to three risk to reward. And it didn't work for me. Now, the first thing I should say actually is it might work for you, but the necessity is there for you to test that it works. Because one to three risk to reward, you know, the risk reward is not some holy grail that suddenly makes you a professional trader. It needs to work with the way you trade. I know, well, I know lots of professional traders. Um, I know a trader who has been trading for years and years. He looks for 0 0.7 to one risk to reward. So he looks to return less than he risks on each trade. He lives a life that most people can only dream of. He's been trading for years and years and years. That's how he makes his income. He's a very well off person, um, you know, and he's looking for less reward than he's risking. So don't just blindly have that as your trading plan. 
I need to get a 1-3 wrist reward because some idiot on a forum told you that's how professionals do it. It's not the case. Uh, with, my, with my trading, with my day trading, I'm looking for 1 to 1 risk to reward, 1.5 to 1 risk to reward on most instances. Now sometimes I will look for more, but everything has to line up before I look to run those profits. And that works for me. So what you need to do is test what works for you. Do the back testing, do the demo trading, do the paper trading, find out what's going to leave you profitable overall, and then implement it into your um, trading plan. So that really, that's really part of the third point as well. It's when you're expanding this trading plan, you need to start thinking about every step of the way. You want to almost try to automate as much as possible. And I don't mean automate as in these people who post up um, their auto bots that are gonna make you 100% um, every week. That's not what I'm talking about. If you're manual trading, you know, some people enjoy manual trading, I do. Um, you need to know what you're doing. You don't want to be under pressure and then having to suddenly think, you know, around issues. You don't want to have to suddenly think, this candle's moved two points, what does that mean? This candle's moved one point in my favor, should I take profits now? You want to know before you get in the trade. This is my first management point, this is where I start to think, or maybe it is when I get to one to one, my stop comes to break even, then it becomes, okay, I'm looking for profit at a sensible level. Or perhaps you've done lots of testing and what works for you is um, 1.5 to 1 risk to reward. Maybe it's 1 to 3 risk to reward, but it has to make sense. It shouldn't just be something that you have read online. Um, because I can assure you, um, most of my problems as a beginner came when I tried to listen to someone else. So when I tried to digest what these professionals were telling me online. When you start to make real progress is when you listen to what they're saying, but then you also test. You ask yourself, why are they telling me this? Is, does this make sense? You know, does someone saying one to three risk to reward, does that make sense to me? Why one to three? Where has that number came from? And then, you know, it always ends up being because you only have to be successful on this percent of your trades. It's like, well, yeah, great, but what if my trading plan um, doesn't get to one to three on that percentage of trades? What if it only gets to one to two? What if it only gets to one to one, but it gets to one to one on 75% of the trades? Why would you not then trade one to one and take that 75% success rate? So do your own testing guys. Um, think about what you're going to do when you're in the trade. Don't just focus so much on identification and entry, which is what so many people do. You want to have a well-rounded trading plan. It should cover things like how much you're going to risk, it should cover things like what you're going to do when you're in the trade, the decisions you're going to need to make, and when you're going to make those decisions. And what tends to happen is when the trade's setting up, you're looking and you're saying, okay, so this point, I need to think about this, I need to see this to keep me in the trade, or this to take me out of the trade, this point, the stock comes to break even, this point is where I would be looking to close 75% of profits, whatever it may be. But all of those decisions are made before you get in the trade. And that allows you to push your emotions aside and just trade the plan. And it also allows you to develop the ability to trade the plan because trust me, when you start trading live, it's not so much on demo accounts, but when you start trading live and risking money, these emotions, everyone's been talking to you about and you've been thinking, what are they talking about? I can do this. I'm not gonna freak out because this candle's moving up and down. The emotions are going to come. And one of the main things you need to do is learn to deal with those emotions. And it's a lot easier to start to build that discipline if you know what you're doing every step of the way. Okay guys, so that's everything for today. As always, I hope that was helpful. I'm James Orr and thank you.